Oh, right, just gonna do a video showing the demonic bloody fruit of Hinduism. Apparently over in India, some of these Hindu extremists, these Hindu nationalists, were out and there's basically been this huge increase of attacks on Christians from these Hindu supremacists, these Hindu nationalists. And again, people say that, oh, Hinduism is peaceful, it's pluralistic. Well, first of all, you read some of the Hindu texts. I have an article on my website about violence in the Hindu scriptures. You just read some of the Hindu texts. It encourages violence against non-Hindus. Uh, it's actually identical to the Islamic Quran in terms of uh, violence and brutality. And just look over in India. I mean, Hinduism over in India is literally killing people who don't, uh, who basically simply eat beef. Is that a peaceful religion? You know, and this article further shows that far from being peaceful, Hinduism is very bloody, violent, and demonic in many cases. And just like Islam, just like Roman Catholicism, just like Talmudic Judaism, just like atheism, pretty much just like any satanic cult out there, Hinduism is bloody, violent, and demonic. And the true side of Hinduism, you see, if Hinduism were to become a theocracy, and if, if your country were to become a Hindu state, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to read this article right now. So I'm going to show the article. So basically, there's these Christians who are being attacked by these Hindu uh, extremist, violent Hindus. Okay, let's read the article. When Indian police approached local Christians in the city of Belagavi, they had friendly they had a friendly warning: skip the prayer meetings or potentially face the wrath of militant Hindu Hindutva groups. Hindu nationalists had spread rumors that the locals had, were, were being forcibly converted in masses to Christianity, yet the local pastors said the congregation at the church were merely gathering for Sunday Mass, a regular and weekly occurrence at the church. A few pastors were called and told not to conduct the prayers, saying right-wing groups may attack them, and the police were not able to give them protection, Pastor Thomas Johnson told a local news channel. Continuing... Again, this is the corrupt, demonic, bloody fruit of Hinduism. Far from being peaceful, Hinduism is uh, full of bloodshed. Okay, and people say, well, doesn't the Old Testament have that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're not dispensationally under the Old Testament anymore. Okay, and God was dealing with the nation. Okay, dispensationally, we're not told to kill people in the name of Jesus Christ. We're never told to kill people in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, name me one verse in the New Testament that tells me to kill somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. It never happens. But there are plenty of examples in the Hindu texts of specific examples of of told to kill people who would blaspheme a hindu god or would basically you know not be a hindu essentially and also would you know you know talk about killing atheists and talk about killing uh other non-hindus okay that's what goes on in these hindu scriptures just like atheism just like islam just like roman catholicism uh full of bloodshed okay jesus christ is the way of salvation satan's way is full of bloodshed Far from being an isolated incident, Hindu nationals have increasingly stepped up attacks against Christians, places of worship, and worshippers across the country. The pattern is often the same. Few first incite fears that conversions are forceful, that Christians are seeking to change the character of India, or that places of worship are illegal. A mob is often brought to, to bear on the targeted group. On Sunday, November 28th, a newly inaugurated church in Delhi faced disruption and vandalism in its first Sunday service when members of a militant Hindu nationalist group called the Bangdrang Dal, am I saying that right? Hope I'm saying that right. Bangdrang Dal uh, stormed the meeting. What happened next is something that, Christ that Christian groups have learned to live with. The police were called to the scene, however, little was done to protect the Christians, and the only attacker to be detained was shortly re released. Yeah, that's what goes on. And if your country were to become a Hindu state, you know, they would waste no time putting your head on a pike. If you dare to speak. I mean, there's, this, again, I'm not, I am a big critic of atheism. Heck, I'm a former atheist. But there is this atheist group called the Atheist Republic. They're literally facing lots of persecution by Hindu extremists because they blaspheme the Hindu god. You know, not much different than Islam, if you really get down to it. Not much different than any uh, theocracy out there. Again, not defending atheism, okay? The Atheist Republic people, they, they are just a bunch of degenerates. They, uh... Um, really have no idea what they're, you know, they really just have no moral standards at all. And I am a critic of atheism because I am an ex-atheist. But just look at the persecution they're facing by Hindu nationalists because they criticize a Hindu god and they made some art about a Hindu god. You know, that shows the example of the fruit of Hinduism. That low level of impu impurity has only encouraged other attackers, or other attackers, yeah, 
In its half-year report, titled Hate and Targeted Violence Against Christians in India, published the year earlier this year, Evangel the Evangelical Fellowship of India documented 145 instances of anti-Christian violence and three murders. The report bitterly noted, bitterly noted that the incidents and the threats took place even as the country was still reeling from the impact of the first wave of coronavirus of the coronavirus pandemic was struck anew by the second wave. One of the most alarming developments is the expansion of the infamous Freedom of Religion Acts, also known as the anti-conversion laws, which have now been extended to multiple states ruled by the the Bharatiya Janata Party. I hope I'm saying that right, or just called the BJP. Well, they're they're basically this Indian political party, which is led by Hindu, by the Hindu nationalist Prime Minister uh, Nesarinda Modi. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing some of these Indian names right. Just forgive me if I'm not pronouncing them right. But the, again, this is the bloody fruit of Hinduism, uh, the corrupt bloodshed of Hinduism. According to local observers, the acts of violence facing Christian communities, far from being random occurrences, are part of a con of con concerted campaign to inf inflame tensions in a bid to justify new laws restricting their worship activities. Uh, new, while Christians make up just over 2% of India's population and Hindus comprise about 80%, radical Hindu nationalists have been carrying out attacks against Christians under the pretext of punishing the, mi the minority for allegedly uh, using monetary rewards to convert Hindus to Christianity. Uh, while they, while the, since the Hindu nationalist BJP took power in 2014, persecution against Christian and Muslim minorities have been on the increase across the country, uh, and today it's one of the worst countries in the world to be a Christian. Yep, that's Hinduism for you. That is the violent, bloody, uh, demonic, you know, lascivious, perverted religion of Hinduism. Okay, I don't hate Hindu people, but the religion of Hinduism, this is the fruit of Hinduism, this violent, demonic bloodshed of just anyone who doesn't who doesn't believe in Hinduism, anyone who is uh, critical of Hinduism, anyone who just converts away from Hinduism, this is the bloody fruit of Hinduism. Uh, continuing, Hindu extremists believe that all Indians should be Hindu and that the country should be rid of Christianity and Islam, said a Christian group monitoring violence in the country. They use extensive violence to achieve the goal, particularly targeting Christians from a Hindu background. Christians are accused of following a foreign faith and blamed for bad luck in their communities. Human rights groups in India said last month they had documented over 300 instances of Christian persecution for the first nine months of 2021. They went on to warn that this year might be the worst in terms of the number of such incidents in the country's history okay so before someone says oh hinduism is peaceful and pluralistic uh this is not what you call peaceful and pluralistic okay the antichrist philosophy of pluralism hinduism is a violent bloody demonic religion okay this is the fruit this is a murderous bloody religion that's what hinduism is and if they were to again if they were to make your country into a hindu theocracy they would waste no time banning any uh, non-Hindu religion and putting your head on a pike if you dare to criticize a Hindu god or if you dare to just simply convert away from Hinduism. You know, and, and one, one thing I have to bring up too, you know, the whole counter, counter jihadi movement, okay, a lot of what they say about Islam is correct, but where I, where I think they go wrong is where they actually will side with Hinduism uh, against Islam. Really, I mean, Hinduism is every bit as violent, bloody, and barbaric and demonic as Islam. So really, I mean, in this case, this is kind of the case where the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. Okay, Islam is satanic, Islam is demonic, but Hinduism is not much better. I'd even say Hinduism is more so, because uh, Hinduism, you know, again, it's one of the worst places in the world to be a Christian. So I would argue that Hinduism is, is in some ways worse than Islam. Uh, Either way, they're both bloody and demonic, and they're both false religions. And the reason why I'm not going to side with either one is because both cults are tickets to hellfire. So I just wanted to point that out. This is the bloody fruit of Hinduism. All they, all they that hate me love death, according to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. And Hinduism is a religion that loves death. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.